yes, you heard me right at the intro. Tonight is a mini musical <laughs> written by, and I am not kidding you, written and composed <laughs> by our uber talented Kristen Harmel. We have a few guests tonight who are actual professional singers, but the five of us will be chiming in. And when I was in the church choir as a kid, they gave me the talking parts. So you are warned. <laughs> All right. So I have to give you a little bit of explanation. Of course, The Forest of Vanishing Stars is about very serious subject matter. Refugees who survived in the forests of Eastern Europe during World War II. And we created this mini, mini musical accordingly. So it's basically a short Broadway style, dramatic and emotional retelling of the book which came out yesterday. As I mentioned, The Forest of Vanishing Stars is rooted in the real life stories of Jewish refugees in Eastern Europe who fled into the forests to escape the Nazis and actually lived through the war that way. The true stories of groups like those led by the Bielski brothers and by a partisan named Zorin are incredible. And the research into those groups and others like them form the backbone of this novel, which centers around an extraordinary young woman named Yoni. So without further ado, I hope you all enjoy The Forest of Vanishing Stars, the musical. Patty, take it away. Okay, here goes. The Forest of Vanishing Stars opens with our main character, Yona, being stolen from the home of her German parents on her second birthday. Her kidnapper, an old woman named Jerusa, believes she has been called by the forest itself to give the girl a different future and a different fate. But what she gives Yona instead is a life of isolation in which Yona knows all the survival skills she'll need in the forest, but almost none of the skills she'll need if she ever ventures outside the safety of the trees. Alone in the woods, I find my way. The life I once knew feels so far away. I talk to the birds, I talk to the trees, but I'm all alone, alone just me. Oh my goodness. Introducing my dear friend, Christina Sivrich, whose Broadway credits include Grease and The Wedding Singer. She has also toured with Broadway Across America Productions, been in multiple regional productions, and starred in shows for Disney Cruise Lines and Walt Disney World. Most recently, wow. she played Dory in Finding Nemo, the musical, at Disney's Animal Kingdom. But tonight, she'll be playing the role of Yona, in the forest of vanishing stars, the musical. How lucky are we? Out here, the world feels so small. The trees stretch forever to nowhere at all. I long for a world just out of my grasp. Maybe one day I'll find it at last. At least Yona had Jerusa, who is never a mother, never a friend, but at least she's company, another person to talk to. Then in 1942, Jerusa dies, leaving Yona with a terrible secret and a revelation. I'm someone else's daughter, someone's lost child. My life was meant for something else, a life across the miles. The Jutners, she said, the Jutners of Berlin. But you mustn't ever seek them. There's evil within. Alone in the woods, Yona wanders, lonelier than she's ever been, trying to piece together the things Jerusa told her. After all, she has memories, faces that come to her sometimes in her dreams. The face of a father and a mother, a warm bed, fresh milk, she thought those fleeting images were just wisps of imagination, but they were glimpses of the life she should have had. And then one day, the life she does have changes forever. She's wandering her familiar woods when she hears a sound, and into the clearing stumbles a lost child. I watch for a moment, paralyzed by fear. We're far from the villages. What is she doing here? She's crying, she's hurt. 
She seems to be alone. She's wearing a star. And she's very far from home. Yona has no choice but to help the child. And when she does, saving her life, she learns that there are horrible, unimaginable things happening outside the safety of her forest. The Germans have arrived and they're rounding up the Jews, locking them into terrible ghettos, executing some at random, deporting others to their deaths. And once Yona knows, she realizes she cannot turn away. She has to do something to help. She feels a calling that she can't explain. Soon, Yona meets another group of refugees. This one is larger and even more in need of her help. Slowly, reluctantly, she emerges from the woods. Who are these souls who've wandered so far? They must be lost, they must be scared, do they know where they are? And that one, there's something about him that draws me right in. I'm frightened, but I have to help. I have to go to him. Who is this woman emerging from the trees? I'm lost and I'm scared. I cannot lead these refugees. But I promised I'd save them. I promised they'd be free. So why am I so frozen as she slowly approaches me? Ladies and gentlemen, I am thrilled to introduce you to my friend, singer-songwriter Stephen Kellogg, who gives incredibly inspiring TED Talks, writes songs that receive Grammy nominations, tours the world, and is the recipient of the Armed Forces Entertainer of the Year Award. Yep, he's amazing. And tonight he'll be playing the role of Alexander, a young man leading a small group of Jewish refugees fleeing the Mir Ghetto just outside the forest that Yona calls home. Welcome, Stephen. Great to be here. Alexander is a good man, but he's a conflicted one too. Yona is drawn to him from the start and soon she becomes a part of his group. But it's terrifying leaving behind her life of solitude. Jerusa always taught her that the only way to survive was to stay steadfastly alone. But Yona realizes that she has a responsibility. Without her, Alexander and his group, which includes three small children, may not survive the winter. So she stays and she helps them to learn to forage for food and how to find shelter when they're deep in the woods all alone. But she's learning vital lessons too. Lessons about love and loss and betrayal that will change her world forever. The winter comes and with it more dangers than they know. They were fleeing from the Germans, but the new threat is the snow. Under blankets of ice, they must eat, they must survive. Perhaps I'm meant to be here keeping them alive. Inevitably, Yona falls in love with Alexander, which changes everything. For the first time since she was stolen as a baby, she belongs to someone, really belongs, as he does to her. But as the balance of their relationship shifts, and as Yona comes more into her own, as a woman and a leader, cracks begin to form, just as they do in the icy streams surrounding them. I want so much to love her, for she's everything to me. But I was taught that to be a man, I should take the lead. She leads us through the forest, and she knows more than I. But I matter too, <clears throat> don't you know? We're not seen eye to eye. Still, they keep each other warm at night. And Yona, who loves Alexander deeply, is learning what it means to give and take, not just in terms of love, but in terms of the dynamics of a relationship, the things that have brought us to where we are at this point in time. 
In the dead of that first winter with Alexander and his group, Yona is leading an expedition through the woods one day when suddenly they're confronted by a man with a gun. At first, she thinks he's a threat, but then she realizes he's leading a group of Jewish refugees too. And there's something about her that stops him in his tracks. Who is this woman so brave and so strong? And who are these people following along? I've led my group from the ghetto and we're living in fear. We've prayed for a miracle. Could this be it right here? Oh my gosh, you guys, it is with great excitement that I reintroduce you to Sean Hedinger, our behind the scenes audio, video, and tech whiz, who also releases music as Memory, spelled with two Ys. Memory's next single, I Love You Maybe, drops this Friday, July 9th, on all music platforms. Sean also happens to be the composer of many of the songs you hear on TV, including the theme music for The Chelsea Handler Show. But tonight, he, has, he is Zeus, who has led a group of refugees from the Lida ghetto into the woods, but is afraid that in the deepest part of winter, he won't be able to keep his people alive. Yona invites him back to the camp where her group is sheltering for the winter, but Alexander isn't pleased. She's putting at us at risk for these people she doesn't know. There's not room for all of us beneath the blanket of snow. I wish things were different, but we're surviving too. We'll all work together, just tell us what to do. We can't turn our backs on them, we must give all we can give. You're not the only ones who deserve a chance to live. How easily you talk as if you're not one of us. I thought that you loved me. Did I misplace my trust? You're everything I want, my love, but we can't do this alone. We must help them survive. We must give them a home. Forgive the intrusion. I don't mean to make you fight. It's just that here in the darkness, I hope we could find a light. And Yona is the light a light in the darkness, a woman who, despite all the odds, was born to be extraordinary. But here deep in the forests of Eastern Europe, here in the depths of a long, hard winter, here, where men, women, and children are being pursued, there's also a great threat from within. I don't understand all the peace of my new life. I thought all we had to do was learn to survive. But it's more than that, don't you see? And though my love runs true, I'm used to being in charge here. And now that leader is you. She's with him and he with her. And I'm broken anyhow. So why am I feeling lost like this? It's too late to turn back now. But betrayals run fast and deep from the places you least expect. And when I'm forced to flee the woods, who knows what will happen next? Oh, well, we know what happens next, but if you want to find out, you'll have to read the book, which wraps the fictional story of Yona around a story of survival as real as the forest itself. In the midst of World War II, thousands of Jews fled into the woods of Eastern Europe and survived there, living off the land, for more than two years. These incredible survivors vanished, as Yona does, into the depths of the forest. And when the war ended, they merged into a world they could not recognize anymore. Kristen captures all of that and more in this intensely researched novel. And now we'd like to close out the musical portion of the show with a little message from us. <clears throat> Into the woods we vanish at last. There's light, there's hope, there's magic as we explore the past. Here in these pages you'll find a story lost of faith and perseverance, whatever the cost. 
You'll find hope in the darkness, a story of light, of the beauty of nature, and the stars out at night. With love and understanding, Yona will find her way. She'll be a light for others as they survive the days. I hope you will find yourself wherever you are in the story surrounding us in the forest of vanishing stars. 